Thank you. Thank you. I'll behave here. Okay, yeah, you okay. behave. Watch that guy next to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, keep him in line, Kim. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody knows I took a ride to Florida on a jet plane and come back in a car, okay? It's all good. I seen the earth from the top. I seen it from the bottom. Amen to that. It was good stuff. But through that, God opened up some more things, and there was confirmation while I was down in Florida. Um, Jeff, Pastor Jeff, who was here approximately two years ago, gave the message on Friday at the Pastor Rick's church. I was on the Pastor Rick's church. Uh, the Holy Spirit led me. When Pastor Rick was here, and Judy's sister-in-law were here last March, April, March, I think it was, in the February, March. I was just led that when I was going down to bring back my mother-in-law to go to their church and help them. I just felt the Holy Spirit telling me to do that, you know. I didn't know what I can do about anything, especially with his knowledge and his wisdom. I can do almost anything. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And we all can do that. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We're all very qualified and very gifted. Amen? But so through the course of that, of course, when you get in the vehicle, when you land at the airport and you walk outside the door and you go, whoa, coming from 50 degrees, uh, the therm thermometers in the car more than once at 100 degrees. It's like, okay, baby. Yeah. But you know what? <laughs> God prepared me. God had me ready. I was, it was okay, because they gave me some indication what was going to take place. You know, we're going to do a little landscaping. Cool. Let's do it. Straw hats are really nice. You know? <laughs> Sunscreen, straw hats are really a blessing down there. And, of course, we kept liquefied and then some. That was really important. But God, through the course of that, I got to be part of their discipleship class, Pastor Rick, and he had some awesome words. He talked about Samson, and it just... There was some stuff that was coming out of it, and it was just, just to be in fellowship. Wherever you go, we're in fellowship because we carry Christ with us. Amen to that? Amen. So wherever we go, but it was just neat to be part of their fellowship. But I'm um, getting back to Friday evening. Um, I think this is where God's been pricking my heart. I want to get closer to him. I want to do totally his will. And that's what Jeff's message was. Pastor Jeff's was Friday night was, we got to let the world go. We got to let everything go and just seek Him and Him only. Because once we seek Him, the rest of it will just fall right into place. And that was His, like He was sharing part of His story in the past. You know, He used to go out and try to minister to people, go to the neighbor's house, knock on the door, you know, hey, I'm going to bring them to Christ. God's timing wasn't in it at all. And so as we seek God, as we prepare our hearts, as we become, as we fellowship, we dis with our discipleship class, whatever it is, as we seek Him, and of course the Word, He will direct us because now we become, our spirit and His spirit become connected. So then we know that was perfect timing. I was just talking to a young lady today about, she needs to talk to her mother-in-law about driving a car, who is up in age, and of course, that could be taking her freedom away because she's, you know, it's a concern. I said, God's timing is perfect, wait on the Lord. Don't try just jumping into this and explaining your side of the story because if God's not in it, she's not going to hear a thing you're going to say. So that's what my heart is, really to seek God with all my heart. There are so many areas of my life that I need to do that. I think we all can um, agree to that. Amen. But with the message that I heard on Friday night, I mean, he just brought it to life. It's like, yes, 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 that's what I want to do. I, I want to be in his will wherever I go, whatever I do, because if I am, I'm going to be a whole lot more valuable to the kingdom than if I go about my own self, you know. My flesh goes out there first, you know what's going to happen. I'll be just, you know, my tail will be between my legs and I'll be going home crying because nothing took place that I wanted it to take place because I was in my flesh. So God gave me a scripture that, which I never go to the book of Revelations, but this is where we're going today. Um, so I'm curious where God's going to take all this, amen? But getting back to a little bit of the going to Florida, even though it was hot, God had put on my heart to help him with everything that I had. And so we went beyond the landscaping that we initially talked about. We actually did pretty much all the way around the church, the two front sections that were just wonderful. One of the things Pastor Rick and I were talking about while we were doing that, we had to prepare basically the foundation for 
the new mulch so that it would look right. You know, I mean, if you just throw it on the weeds, you throw it on the uneven ground and all that other stuff, what do you get? You get a product or something that's just not the best that it could be. We, we talked a lot about <laughs> I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. <laughs> so we, we talked about the foundation stuff. He says, that's good, brother. And I says, you know, that's what it is. It's in Jesus Christ is our foundation. Amen. Without him as our foundation, we're going to crumble. We're going to fall. We're not going to look good. We're not going to smell good. We're not going to do anything good, are we? Amen. We're going we're gonna to basically be failures because no matter how hard we try in our flesh, we're going to fall on our face. Amen. It's, it's going to happen. So we got talking about that. So it took us a lot longer to prepare the actual space that we were going to do the mulch in, but when it was all said and done, it was beautiful, beautiful. But we were focused. We were going to get the job done no matter how high the sun got, no matter how hot it got. We were focused. Pastor Rick was running for water constantly and stuff like that. You need some more water, brother? I said, absolutely. So I think we drained one of those big jugs of water, just me and him alone probably being outside, but that's okay. But when it was all said and done, I... I felt good about it because I think God put on my heart that, you know, the world wants to see stuff good, I guess. Even though as Christians, you know, we overlook that stuff because we're coming in, we're looking at the hearts of people, we're looking at how God is moving in a building. We're not looking at the building so much. We know God's presence is here. Amen. But down there, I just felt, you know, by us giving it the facelift, you might say, with the landscaping, that was going to help help God's kingdom draw people in, you know, we fixed the lights on, this, on their sign and stuff like that. I mean, just a bunch of stuff, you know, that's all going to add up. And I believe God's going to, that's a stepping stone for their, their ministry down there to help it grow. You know, and I just felt led to do that. I'm glad I was part of it. God is good. Amen. You know, he gave me these hands and they got worked where they became red because we use red mulch. <laughs> but that's okay. It was good stuff. We did excellent, but that message so much hit me in the eyes because that Jeff gave because it just that's where I'm at. I want more. I want to do it the right way. And I, I run, you know, I'm not reading this like I'm supposed to. I'm not doing a lot of things I feel down in my heart that I should be doing. But God is continuing to lead me and not, he's not going to forsake me. He's not going to drop me by no Amen. means Amen. because my heart is that I want more. And I want to do it his way. I don't want to do it my way because I know my way is going to, it's just going to fail. Amen. So through the course of this, he brought me to Revelations and we're going to go to chapter 3 of Revelation. And I want to start in verse, everybody knows this one, I'm sure. Um, we're going to start with, let's see. Hmm. I guess let's just go to verse 15, chapter 3, verse 15. There's so much in here, and you know, of course, this is the Word of God, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit, or in this case, Jesus actually spoke these words, and it was, you know, taken down, so that we can have it for future use, of course. So, I'm just going to read the first two verses, and then I'm going to jump over to someplace else, but... In verse 15, it says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Those are some pretty harsh words from our Lord and Savior. Yeah. But let's just, I'll just throw this at you real quick here. For all of us parents, which most of us are, in here if not your child of a parent correct okay in order for us to be on the right path and do the things that we should be doing we were disciplined by our parents and directed and given directions and you know maybe taken by the hand or explained why we shouldn't be doing something that is a loving parent that's what exactly what Jesus is doing here. It's harsh, but yet again, he wants us to succeed. Amen. He don't want us to be in the middle of no man's land, and one day I'll walk with God, but then when I hang around my buddies at work, I'm going to go back over here and do this or say this or listen to these off-color jokes. I'm sorry, I walk away from that all the time at work. It's like, I'm good. I don't need to listen to that. I, I just don't. 
it's not for me, it's not edifying God, we're not going to glorify God by listening to that trash. Right. You know, Amen. and I'm sure we're all at a point in life where we take that extra step to get away from that and then repent. Lord, I'm sorry, I even heard a word of that, you know, let's get rid of that because it's not of God. And we don't want to be any of that. We don't want any darkness in us. We want the light and the life that Jesus Christ has given us because of that cross so that Amen. we can give it out wherever we go, however he directs us to give it out. Amen? Amen. But anyway, just to kind of summarize that part about he was going to vomit us out of the mouth in Proverbs, of course, 13, 24, he says, He who spares his rod hates his son. But he who loves him disciplines him promptly. I believe, without a doubt, that's, that's what Jesus was doing. He was getting our attention. People, you need to get it right. right. This is my discipline. This is, I'm calling you out on this. You know, you need to make a decision here. Amen. Hopefully it's a, the decision to be like Jesus Christ. To spread his word. Share his love. We're learning in discipleship class. We have the same power Jesus Christ does. Well, not only in discipleship class, but in the Word, it talks about that. We will do greater things, Jesus said, than He did. Amen. That's crazy. But yet again, He has faith in us. He will take us to that point. He will help us heal people. He'll help us deliver people. It's not by our power. So we don't take that glory. We allow Him. Jesus did it, not me. Amen. You know? I was wearing my shirt the other day. At, uh, Mom and I were on the way back. We stopped at a restaurant, and it just said, uh, salute the flag, I believe, stand for the flag, and kneel for the cross. And she said, I thank you for your patronage, and I thank you for your faith. I said, you're welcome. I said, God is good. You know, without him, we're nothing. So not that I was looking for that confirmation, but it was just neat to see that people are watching. People are watching. So as we go out there, let's set that example. Jesus set the bar up here, but you know what? We're capable of running with him. Amen. We'll never be like him totally until God takes us home. Amen to that. Because Amen. we were born into sin, we battle it every day. But because of him, we're conquerors. We're overcomers. Yeah. We're overcomers. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen. So, but I just wanted to bring that up. You know, Like I said, whoever spares that rod on his son hates his son because you're not disciplining him. You're not taking him... You're not correcting him, and Jesus wants to correct us, and that's exactly what he's doing in Revelations in this one. He talks about vomiting us out. Let's come on, let's get on board, let's get in that, in, let's get in the game, I guess. Let's, let's put it to you that way, you know. Amen. So, there's lots of good stuff, but let's go back to Revelations now. Chapter 3. I'll just reread verse 16. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become um, wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Well, I guess that sums up the world, didn't it? Right there? Amen. Because when we believe we got everything, Jesus gets put on the back burner. Yeah. That's what God's been telling me. Don't he don't he can't be there. God's got to be number one in my life. I, hopefully everybody else is believing that too because we really need Him first. Boy, when we get Him first, the rest of the world is just gonna let it go, let it go. You know, just stand back and where we can change it, man. Let's step in and just let that light of the Lord just shine through us. You know, and just touch people's life and give them that hope. You'll, you'll build that reputation where people come alongside you and pull you aside and say, hey, man, I need prayer. I need, you know, something's going on. Take advantage of that and have no doubt in your mind that your prayer is effective. Right. No doubt in your mind. God has proven that to me in a, many occasions that I had opportunity to pray for people. And just such a blessing. Not that I was looking for that, but yet again, I just stepped back. And the neat thing is he might not let you know that for a while. So you're questioning yourself, eh, but then when you, if you do, the main thing is that we believe that our prayer is effective. Amen. That's the main thing. If we get confirmation back that God did something through that prayer, amen and hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for using me. Yes. And let it be, and let's look for that next opportunity. Amen? Amen. 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 But I just like this, you know, he talks about, um, I am rich. Until you have Jesus Christ. Yes deep inside of you, 
and know what he did on this cross for you, you'll never be rich. Amen. Never be rich. I don't care how many toys you got. I don't care how many boats and snowmobiles and tools. It don't matter. When he's inside of there, that peace of the Lord is just so thick. You are just, Amen. you know, you can rest. Like my wife is right now, like Pastor doing right now. She's resting. She might be watching us, but she's resting. <laughs> Amen? She is. Okay, Brittany gave me the nod. She's watching me, so i got to be a good boy, okay? Don't you be causing any trouble up here. <laughs> David, I have uh, trouble staying out of trouble. I'll take it down a notch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no. Um, God is so good, but like I say, he's our riches. He's our peace. He's our love. He's everything that we need. The rest of the world is just part of that abundancy that Christ has for us, that God has for us, you know? Amen. But the neat thing is with the abundancy, just like the giftings he gave me and I went down, I did a whole stack of stuff down there. I was from greasy hands to red hands to toilet bowl hands to you name it down there, okay? It didn't matter. I just wanted to help. And you know, Pastor Rick says, oh, yeah. I said, okay, let's go to Home Depot and get some more stuff. He goes, really? Come on, let's go. Yeah, he was getting mad at me. <laughs> Not really. He called me a slave driver a couple of times. I don't get it. But it's cool. I love it. It was good. Not that I was a slave driver. Just like I said, I was there for a purpose. And I wanted to do all that I could for the kingdom. That's what I was there for. And he, he knew that. You know, we just had a lot of fun. That's all. But uh, so that's a neat thing. So all right, let's read on a little farther. So let's go to verse 18. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich with white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Isn't that so true? God takes all the dirtiness of our life and turns it into that white stuff, yeah. turns us pure snow, because that was the past. We are renewed in Jesus Christ, you know. We are, what is that Sandy's favorite verse? I can do all things Christ through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Amen. Shall we all repeat that? Let's repeat that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Isn't that the truth? With his strength, we can do anything. So just remember that first. I mean, that popped in my mind. As soon as I, that popped in my mind, I know Sandy, that's her favorite verse. So it's like, yes. But with him, all things are possible. Yes. All things are possible. And he, he takes all the garbage of our life and the nakedness, just like when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and God says, where are you, Adam? Well, I'm naked. He didn't know that until that point, until he sinned. So nakedness is re regarding all of our sin, all of our darkness, everything that's going on in our life that is not of Christ. So we got to get rid of that junk. Let's repent. Let's get rid of it. You know all about the cross. You don't, you don't need the cross. You just need to get on your knees and out of your heart, repent. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. God knows our heart. So if we're genuine, He will cleanse us. He will take care of us. He'll make Amen. us white as snow again. Amen to that? Amen. That's good stuff. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, just like we talked about. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. And I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. So that's neat because when Jesus was here, he said he only did what the Father said. As we are in the Spirit, we know what Jesus wants. We understand we're hearing that Spirit connection, and we will do what Jesus did, what Jesus wants us to do, because, of course, He's directed from the Father. The Holy Spirit is directing us. Amen. But because of the three in one, we have directions that ourselves as fleshly people cannot do. We go places that we didn't imagine we were going to go. We meet up with somebody that we didn't think we were going to meet up with. You know, it's just neat how you come up with these appointments, you might say, yes. that are of God. And it's, we have to take those opportunities, you know, lay hands on them, pray with them, or at least ask them, hey, you want me to pray? The Holy Spirit will direct us on just what to do with that. I'm going to throw something else at you that in my daily devotion, I read it here a while ago, and it has to do with this. 
And um, basically, it's like, <laughs> might sound a little funny, but as each of us have been in and through the world, the, the word would be sleeping around. Like, ooh, I suppose back in our younger days, that was quite a saying, you know, and you just kind of, eh. But any time we're doing something that is not of Christ, we're sleeping around on Jesus. Right. We're not doing his will. We're not, you know, yeah. we're, we're backstabbing him. We're being a traitor. We're two-timing on him, whatever it may be. And, I mean, that hit home at me. It's like, ouch, because... There's so many things that can lead us astray. Yeah. Take up our Amen. take up our mind. You know, the Bible talks about praying without ceasing. You know, we can do be doing a lot of stuff. You know, traveling on the road. It was so cool coming back with mom because, you know, she said pick out a Christian station. Of course, from Florida to Michigan, there's a lot of stations you got to go through. But I was Amen. persistent. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I was happy to find the station. You know. Um, and I was not distracted. I wasn't distracted driving or nothing. I just kept focused and yeah, yeah, you know. But just because of that presence, because then, you know, that helps you go through things. God brings stuff to your memory and stuff like that. So we can do that without ceasing, praying without ceasing wherever we go, whatever we do. <clears throat> a lot of our work areas perhaps allow us to do certain things, you know. Um, but whatever it is in our, in our work area, our home life, we're on our children, grandchildren, church activities, whatever it is. Let's just serve the Lord with all of our hearts. Amen. Let's not allow that devil to sneak in there and steal from us because he's a thief, you know. We all go through things, you know. Pastor's going through something right now, but you know what? She's victorious. Amen. Because Jesus took all that already. That's right. You know, and she's doing great. She'll be back. Oh, yeah. She'll be dancing and jumping and boxing gloves around. The devil's going down. Amen to that? Because he is a liar. We Amen. all know that. He wants to drag us down. He wants to take us to places that are dark, relentless, that shame, just like we read about. He wants to take us to that shame place. You know what? We all know it. Because of that guy right up there, the shame is gone. Amen. Amen that? We are free. There's no more of that. We can be just at peace, at joy. And when the devil starts rattling our cage, get on your knees, hit the altar, grab a friend, say, I need prayer. A good friend of mine, Mary and I are just talking about him, John, and we're hoping that I'm going to talk to him about one of these days to come in here and share his part of his, part of his testimony because this is ooh, also. But because he called me here the other day just out of the blue. We, we try communicating every couple of weeks or something like that, but he's got a family now and you know, everything's going on. It's just one of those things, but he called me and he needed prayer. I said, let's do it. And then I got a report back and God's on the move, you know, and later, later he said another meeting he had, he was down in Lansing then, which is way out of his comfort zone, trust me. Just to be in front of this many people would get him nervous, okay? But now he's in front of three to five, three to four hundred people, he said, were at this conference. But God was there with him. He said only God could have did what he did. Right. And, their, and their presentation that they had to present, he said there was no way. They tried rehearsing it the night before, and he said it was a disaster. He said, I don't know how this is going to work. But he said God showed up the next day, and he said they flowed together, and they... They were, they represented their organization very well. And uh, a lot of good comments, a lot of good feedback, you know, because what it was was a conference so that everybody could learn from each other, or, uh, each other's organization, but they did very well. They represented theirs very well and they were able to just, you know, shine the light of the Lord because it's all Christian backed, you know, their group is. And I'm hopefully a lot of the other ones that were there listening in weren't, if they weren't Christian backed, I think the light was shining on him. Amen to that. Amen. So, anyway, God is so good. I just feel that hopefully everybody who just wants to take that extra step or extra two steps, whatever it may be, to get closer to the Lord, to be more like Him wherever we go. You know, whatever it is, taming our tongue, stepping in front. You know, I, I the Lord when He put this on me when Pastor and I went to the hospital today. I took my Bible with me. I took my daily devotion with me. I just walked right in there. It's like, 
This is what you want me to do, Lord. I, wherever I go, I got to represent him. Amen. I have to. And if I'm not, I'm a phony. I'm that lukewarm guy that he don't want. I don't want that. I want him to tell me, well done, good and faithful servant, which I had an opportunity to share that with somebody. A lot of people know who he was prior to him passing away, and I just felt that God wanted me to tell him that just to give him that closing. I felt God wanted me to share that with him so that he was reaffirmed that he did God's work when he was here. Because he was a mentor in my life for years and years and years and years and years. I worked with him and stuff. And just his continence and his way of doing things really helped me get through a lot of my junk, you know. And so I was just blessed by him. But I, I shared that with him. And I was in tears, big time. But it was worth it. Because yeah. his daughter said, wow. Yeah. You know. So wherever you get that opportunity, let the light shine. Amen. 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 Let's close in prayer. Father, we just thank you for... The love that you have for us, Father, even though this is a rebuke, but yet again, it's a good rebuke because, Jesus, you love us so much. You want us just to do your will. You want us to do your things wherever we go to be in your presence and just let your light shine. So, Father, I'm thanking you for new strength and new endurance and new perseverance for each and every person that's here, each and every person that's watching this service, that they will seek you with all their heart, all their mind, and all their soul. Because, Lord, once we have you, there's nothing else we're going to want. That's all that we need is you, Jesus, in our hearts. We thank you for what you did on the cross so all of us could have that abundant life, Father, that you have already prepared for us. So, Lord, we're thanking you right now. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.